Example 5.1. In this example, we have water flowing steadily through a nozzle at the end of a fire hose. According to local regulations, the nozzle exit velocity must be at least 20 meters per second. We need to determine the minimum pumpkin capacity, or Q, required in meter cubes per second. Since this is a control volume problem, the first step is to draw the proper control volume. This is given by this blue line. After drawing the control volume, we need to determine the control surfaces. We have two, one going in and one exiting the control volume. We also notice that in both control surfaces, the velocity is constant. We also know from the problem that the flow is steady. So we start the analysis with the continuity equation for a control volume. This is the form, which is the Reynolds transfer theorem or mass transfer. Since we have a steady state condition, this term is going to be equal to zero. So we are able to get rid of it. For the second term, we divide it into the two control surfaces. So we're gonna have control surface one and control surface two. And we analyze the quantities in each one of the control surfaces. For us to be able to get the terms out of this integral, we need to make sure that the velocity is constant throughout the area of the control surface. For both of the control surfaces, we know that the velocity is constant. So we're able to transfer this particular integral and it becomes basically just the mass flow rate. So we write the mass flow rate at point one and the mass flow rate at point two. Now let's analyze the signs of it. Since mass flow rate at point one is equal, uh, is entering the system or the control volume, we have it to be negative. Since the control surface at point two is exiting the control volume, we have it to be positive. And we know that this has to be equal to zero. Therefore, we know that the mass flow rate at point one is equal to the mass flow rate at point two. Therefore, we write density velocity one, area one, is equal to density, velocity two, area two. We also know that the fluid is going to be incompressible, so this values of density drop out. We would tell that the velocity at point one times the area point one is going to be equal to V2, A2, which is equal to the volume flow rate. And we know that it's going to be constant. So for us to be able to find the value of Q, we could either have multiply the velocity at point two and the area at point two, or the values at point one. The problem provides information at point two, so we find the value of Q to be equal to 20 meters per second. And we know that the area is going to be equal to pi over four times the diameter square, and the diameter is given to be 0.04 meters square. Therefore, we find that, that the value of Q is given as 0 0.0251 meter cube per second. So as we stated before, this is a case of steady conditions for a control volume in which the velocities at each one of the control surfaces is constant. When that is the case, we could simplify the integral that we have over here simply as the summation of the mass flow rates at each one of the points and that has to be equal to zero. Once again, this could only be done, the simplification could only be done if you have a steady state and the velocities at each one of the control surfaces is constant.